because awareness has taken over. So you're simply aware of the feelings. Because, you know, again, because we're not connected apparently to the one mind, we, we're not at that place that collectively I can feel what you feel. Uh, I can hear, I can hear your thoughts. I mean, we are connected. I'm not saying we're not, and we, we feel a lot about each other, but we, as a species, we haven't come to this place of um, having this telepathic communication on a clear channel yet. So we, because we have this sense of separation, we are living in this world completely isolated from everyone else. So you think you're the only one who is going through what you're going through. And each and every person feels that way. I'm the only one who has doubts. But, you know, as I'm sharing it with you, it, it arises in everyone. Even the most enlightened person, I've, I never had the honor of meeting him in person, but I refer to him as my spiritual grandfather, Ramana Maharishi, who is the teacher of my teacher, Papaji Punjaji, Ramana Maharshi became enlightened, awake, and fully realized at age 16 and or 13, something like that. And then he leaves his hometown and he goes to Arunachala in Tiruvannamalai and he sits under this mountain called Arunachala, which is a red mountain and we call it it's like the sister of thunder mountain in sedona so they're like brother sisters so ramana is living in a temple or in a cave under this mountain and then disciples people find out about him they you know after a few years they realize like this is a sage this is a fully realized sage. And they create, they build the uh, ashram for him, which is still there. And this is like in like 1920s, 30s. He died, I think, in 1952. Um, but anyway, thousands of thousands of people have gone to Ramana Maharishi and his presence, he was the embodiment of silence. Ramana Maharshi, in the modern history of gurus and sages, I think it was, in my opinion, is the biggest one. And he was the embodiment of silence. And thousands of people got enlightened from just looking into his eyes. Because for 30, 40 years, he never left the ashram. He was always there at the foothill of this mountain, Arunachala, and he never went anywhere. And thousands of people, uh, pilgrims, spiritual seekers that they came to him, got healed, got enlightened, all kinds of different things happened. But Ramana Maharshi, one day, according to the tales that I heard, he freaks out. And he's running into the forest. He's walking, going to the forest and he's like, God, God, you know, all these people come to me. And, you know, they want to come and, you know, put their head on my shoulder. I'm the papa to millions of people. Who do I go to? Who do I go to? So he's running into the forest and he's going to the state. And to the point that all of a sudden he says, okay, Arunachala is the 
physical manifestations of Lord Shiva and okay, here's my guru. So he just comes back to the ashram. What I'm saying is don't be hard on yourself and anyone, any person. It's natural. It's a part of the game that every once in a while we doubt ourselves. We doubt everything. Fear comes. And we doubt it. We doubt things. That's a part of the deal. Andrea, I actually have been able to look at, where are you? We lost you. You're still there. Okay, you're from Germany. And then what is your, do you believe, okay, from Andrea. I'm sorry, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, forgive me, Andrea. Do you believe in one body we are? One body. I'm not exactly sure if I understand, but yes, it is one body. It's just... It's the one that appears as many. The one that appears as many. There's only one. And that one appears as 7 billion human beings. But behind it, it's still that one. So in that way, yes, we're one body. Uh, okay, Andrea says that, but we should try um to do it to connect inside of ourselves yeah andrea you don't have a choice not trying to connect with yourself once you're invited on a spiritual path and you're going through the process of self awakening you're pretty much screwed You know, you're, there's no way back. You can't go back. So you get impregnated by God. God gets you pregnant. Gets you, puts, puts the seed of awakening inside you. And this seed is like a time bomb. And in different people, it explodes in different time. Some people, it's going slowly. Some people, all of a sudden, explodes. Once you get on this path and, and the big love, the big kahuna reveals itself to you, you are screwed. You, you, there's, that's it. You're really literally screwed in a way, in a sense of saying. Because now you tasted God and you want more. You want more. You can't stop. You can't go back. So you're forced to look inside and dive within yourself. And yeah, the connection comes, whether you like it or not. Because as you get more connected with yourself, you find a bigger connection with existence. That doesn't mean that you get more connected with yourself. You want to be around people. Not necessarily. Because a lot of people go deeper within themselves in the awakening. And the more they're awakened, the less they want to be around the sleepy ones. Because the sleepy ones, they're disturbing them. So there's no one formula. Some people go through awakening and they go into teaching and they share. And some awakened ones, they go in isolation. There is no right or wrong to it. That's the way it is. All right. Well, nice seeing everybody. This broadcast is, re is recorded, hopefully. I believe so. I mean, Amir's been working on it. It says it's recorded. And we're going to be... Uh, emailing it to you those of those of you who we have your email we're going to send it to you and um we're going to be putting it after it's uh cleaned up 
we will put it on my YouTube channel. You will have access to the full recording and we also chop it up and we put 10 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, short version of it on our YouTube channel. And uh, we put the full broadcast on, uh, I think you will put it on Facebook because this one's got this microphone and it's not a good recording, I don't know. So, and I think our system is good enough right now for the podcast. I'm hoping like we we recorded this correctly. Uh, hopefully next week, we're planning on broadcasting on YouTube, my YouTube channel and the Zoom. Uh, if we can get our internet quality to a point uh, that is working well, um, we're planning on doing that. My channels are Zaratustra 5D. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, my website is uh, zaratustra.tv and my email is info at zaratustra.tv. So if you want to communicate with me, you can write to me via email and I'll be very happy to uh, get back with you. I don't have any uh, programs coming. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, forgot. <laughs> I'm presenting an, an event. It's a 5D event uh, being... Um, hosted by David Farman, and that's going to be in Sedona, Arizona. And I'm going to be, I have two events on, uh, I think it's Saturday, June 24th and June 20, July 24th and July 25th. And that's going to be in Sedona, Arizona. So we're going to be putting it up on my website as well as um, sending an email to everyone. So... If anybody feels compelled to come to my two events, you're welcome to. If you're in the U.S., of course, it's easy to travel because they took, I think, uh, uh, I believe that, uh, I mean, as far as I know, we can travel freely in the U.S. right now. I know for the, a lot of Europeans and people from other countries, there's still not a lot to come to the U.S., and uh, but anyway, if you're in the U.S. and you want to come to Sedona, Arizona and meet me uh, almost towards the end of July, please do. I'll be happy to see you. Sending you a lot of love and light. And I hope to see you next Wednesday. Namaste. <laughs>